This graphic design slideshow is on giving and receiving feedback. And we talked about feedback a little bit in our effective communication slideshow, but this is a different type of feedback. This type of feedback is where I design something and then I ask you what you think about it and you give me some feedback of, well, maybe you could scoot this line over to the left a little bit, or I like the color, but the design needs some work because of this and this. That kind of thing. Feedback, as in constructive criticism. This is a vital part of the design process, one that we're going to be using all semester long on almost all of our designs. So it's really important to be able to give good feedback as well as be good about receiving feedback because it can be kind of hard sometimes to receive bad feedback on a design that you worked really hard on. So let's go over how to give feedback, receive it, and all different types of aspects of feedback. Feedback. Why do we even want it? You know, a lot of times you may think, you know what? My design is just fine. I don't need any feedback. It looks great. And sometimes that can be the case. However, Oftentimes we get so emotionally involved in a design and we've put so much of our heart and soul into it that it's very hard for us to correct things that are maybe weak in it because it hurts so bad because we put ourselves so much into the design. So why do we want feedback from other people? Other people offer a fresh unbiased perspective. They haven't been staring at the computer screen for the past five hours at the same thing, and with one glance at it, they can say, oh, I like it, or hey, maybe try a different font, that kind of thing. They're unbiased because they're not emotionally involved in the design. And oftentimes, when I get feedback from other people, they have way different ideas than I did, but they have ideas that I didn't even think about things that were completely outside of the box for me. They offer more ideas and sometimes they're not better, but sometimes they are. And, and the feedback can make your design great when it was just good before. We're going to go over five rules to getting the right feedback on your designs. Um, we want it to be really good feedback and we want you to be able to um, take the feedback into consideration within your design. So that means you need to get some good feedback so that uh, there's stuff to take into consideration. First of all, what you want to do as a designer to get good feedback is clarify the objective. Secondly, be specific. Third, listen. Fourth, invite constructive criticism. And fifth, take the advice. So let's go over each of these in turn and talk about them a little bit. The first rule of getting the right feedback for your design is to clarify your objective to the people that you want feedback from. So ask yourself, what is your goal as a designer and what's your goal for the project? For example, I've got this picture here of this Havoc logo that I designed. Um, go into receiving feedback as, is my goal for simplicity? Is it for professionalism? Is it to reach my target audience? Is it to um, look cool and hip and also professional? What is the goal? Clarify it to yourself before you start the design and then clarify it to the people that are giving you feedback on the design so that their feedback coincides with what your goal of the project is. second principle of uh, <clears throat> receiving feedback on a design is to be specific to the people you want feedback from. What do you want feedback on? For example, in this uh, design I did of my logo on the t-shirt here, do I want feedback on the placement of the logo on the shirt? Do I want feedback on the logo? Do I want feedback on the colors? Do I want overall feedback? What do you think of the project? You want to know what you want 
before you ask the people for it. So when you're posting in a forum later this semester on posting your logo, ask, what do you guys think of these colors? What do you think of the font? What do you think of these lines here? Be specific and ask for the places where you know that you're going to need some feedback. The third thing you're going to want to do when you're receiving feedback is listen. Oftentimes, we as designers have a hard time hearing other people's ideas when it pertains to our own idea. Don't be so quick to turn away ideas just because they're different than your ideas. Um, it's, again, very easy to do that, to just turn them away. But as you hear ideas, even if they're bad ones, they might even spur you on to a better idea that wasn't the person's idea at all. Their idea just spurred on a better idea from you. So make sure to be a good listener as they're giving you feedback on your design. The fourth thing you're going to want to do when receiving feedback for a design is to invite constructive criticism. You're not going to get anywhere on your design if you only want to hear good things about it. <clears throat> also, don't be defensive or prideful. It's really not personal. It is your design, although it feels personal because you put your heart and soul into the design. Now, as a designer, you're going to be dealing with criticism, constructive criticism, and also bad criticism, a lot. You're going to have clients who are going to want things a specific way, and they're going to tell you everything they don't like about what you did to the design. And that's okay. That's part of the job. These seven logos that I did right here for um, this man who owns this company, he pretty much told me on every logo what he wanted exactly and the colors, and he wanted to see them all laying next to each other. And so in essence, I just put it together for him. I didn't even really design it for him. And... Um, when he would say, I don't like this roof, I don't like this window, I don't like this chimney or this sun or whatever, that was okay. I didn't need to get defensive or prideful because it wasn't personal. First of all, it wasn't really my idea for the design anyway. But, um, you know, it's he's trying to get the very best logo for his company. And to do that, he has to turn away the bad ideas. So got to invite the constructive criticism to get to the very best spot. The fifth principle of receiving communication on a design is to just take the advice. And that is a two-way thing here. Sometimes the advice is bad and you don't you shouldn't take it. But oftentimes it is going to make your design better. Although, we talked about this before, even if you don't use their advice, their advice could spur you on to another idea that could make your design even better. These are two posters that I designed, and uh, I changed the colors on them, and then asked people which ones they liked better. And I had a preference and liked the uh, blue one on the left better, but more people liked the one with the purple dots on the right. And so I took the advice and got the purple one with the dots printed up on the right. Um, instead of the blue one that I personally liked better because more people were going towards the purple one. So sometimes you do need to take the advice. Show it to a bunch of different people. See what everybody's opinion is. Maybe the one person you asked uh, was a weirdo and their advice was really weird and everybody else thinks that your design looks great that way or whatever. So take the advice with a grain of salt. All right, so we went over five rules of being able to receive the right kind of feedback for your design. Now let's go over five rules to giving the right feedback to somebody's design. Because there's ways to do it that are good and ways to do it that are bad. So we're going to learn how to do it that's good because you're going to be giving lots of feedback in this class as well as receiving it. So the first rule is be respectful. Second, be specific. Third, provide justification. Fourth, balance the positive and negatives. And fifth, quote, have you considered, end quote. So let's go over each of these in a little bit of detail. 
the first rule to giving somebody the right feedback is to just be respectful of them. It's really just the golden rule, guys. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And here's a design. This is a design I did. And if you knew that I had put my heart and soul into this design, and you just came and tore it to shreds, and you hate the font, you hate the colors, you hate the design, you hate the logo, you hate this, this, this. It's very um, overwhelming, and it's not very nice and respectful. So just make sure that when you're saying something to somebody, and maybe it's not the most happiest thing they've ever heard, say it in a nice way at least. Be respectful of them and their feelings, and they, in turn, will be respectful of you and your feelings. Be specific is the second rule of giving good feedback, and this one is so vitally important. The more specific you are when you give them feedback, the better the feedback is. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, for example, um, on these Ellis Design logos, you can say, instead of saying, wow, um, I really don't like the second logo here, I really just don't like it. How is that helpful to somebody? If you say, hmm, that, that E, it's tilted, it's kind of hard for me to read, it kind of confuses me right when I first look at it. The more specific you are, the more that the designer can go, oh, is that confusing? Maybe I better fix that. And then you can offer alternatives instead of just saying, well, I don't like this. I don't like that you have an underline on design on the third logo at the bottom. Why don't you say, maybe try putting a square around it. Um, try doing the font in white. Try uh, putting the design underneath Ellis instead of off to the side. That type of thing. So, remember, specific details are way more helpful than somebody just saying, I don't like it. The third rule to giving good feedback is to provide justification. So, give the person, the designer, reasons why something doesn't work or doesn't work. Remember, it's going back to not just saying, I don't like it, or I do like it. It's saying, wow, I really like this because I feel like it's easy to read. I feel like the design is pleasant. It's simple. It follows the rules of design, that kind of thing. Sometimes this can turn into a battle of opinions because, you know, some might say here on this flyer that I've designed, well, it looks a little crowded to me. My eye doesn't really know where to go. And somebody might say, well, I think it's fine. There's plenty of white space. Um, you know, it's got everything on there that it needs to have, and I think that's it's good. And ultimately, it's the designer's design, and they're going to do what they're going to do. So give your reasons why you think something works or doesn't work. Give the justification and then let it go, it's not your design anyway. The fourth rule to giving good feedback to somebody is to balance the positive and the negatives. As human beings, we like to be validated. When we do something good, we like to be praised for it. When we do something bad, we want people to ignore it. However, sometimes with a design, you have to say something not so good about their design. You need to say, hmm, that font isn't my favorite, or whatever. So oftentimes giving a validation of the good things on the design, um, and then also then saying the bad stuff, it keeps people a little bit happier. For example, on these logos that I've done here, you know, saying, wow, I really like that sun. It looks really good. It matches the synergy. I love the flow of the color with that. Um, maybe the leaf coming out of the chimney um, not my favorite thing in the world. I wonder if, if it would look better if you did this. And it also is important to be open and honest with these types of things, but you can validate the good things about somebody's design um, if you do have some bad things to say. And again, it's just the building them up instead of tearing them down principle. We're all in this together. You're going to be getting feedback from the same people, so make sure that you're just being respectful of them and not, uh, you know, making them feel really bad. We want to 
improve their design, but we also don't want people to feel really bad either. So you can say the things you don't like about their design in a nice way by balancing the positives and the negatives. And finally, the fifth rule of giving good feedback to somebody is just the have you considered rule. Um, just remember to phrase your words carefully when suggesting things to somebody. Um, just say, have you considered doing this? Have you considered changing the font? Have you considered changing the spacing on this business card? Have you considered um, centering this, right aligning this, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. Instead of just saying, definitely got to right align that or this will only look good if it's centered, that type of thing. And again and again, I keep saying the same things. It just goes back to being respectful and aware of the other person's feelings as you give them feedback on their design. So I hope you learned something today about giving good feedback to others, as well as how to receive it and incorporate it into your designs. As we give each other feedback as designers, we're going to improve our designs exponentially and become better designers because of the feedback that others give us.